message to all these people? Well, what what message can I give ex except that I am I am that way I am, and I don't think any part of the world could change me. I would continue to be the black swan forever. <laughs> no part in the world would change me to anything else. I would continue the way I was. Go ahead. Um, I would be interested in knowing what your views are on using social media as a means of marketing. Because it's cheap and it's in your control, so you're not really given the control of how you market your products. I think social media is a very good idea. It's excellent. It takes you away from mass marketing by way of ads, and then it's the right method, I think, to go through. Social media is very good. It was more of conversation and giving yourself in it, and it sort of puts you on a one-to-one -one basis with the person concerned. It's very good as a marketing tool. I'm still against ads. I still don't think that uh, mass marketing is good. Maybe for a product is good, but not for a line. You see, we are not a, not a normal product. I think, again, we're the only company in the world that uh, is doing treatments and cures. Like, we're in serious business, like falling hair, dandruff, acne, pigmentation, dark circles, bald patches, alopecia, anything to do with uh, scars, burns, acne, whatever. So I think in this type of a program, a one-to-one -one, uh, care program is necessary, not uh, uh, mass market. What do you say, IQ, what do you say in an ad? You can't, you can't tell a story in an ad. You can't. Uh, I was asked at uh, London, the why don't you advertise? And I said, you know, we're in Ayurveda. Do you all know Ayurveda? Ayurveda, you know? It's uh, a 3000 BC Indian science of treatments and cures. So they asked me at the press conference in London that, why don't you advertise? And I said, you cannot advertise a culture, a heritage, or a civilization in an ad. You can write a book on Ayurveda. What do you say that I work miracles? I'll give you one little example. If you read my press material, there's a story of Michael. I can't explain the power of Ayurveda, but you should understand, because there's heavy use of chemicals in your country. Uh, Princess Diana's grandmother, Barbara Cartley, very good friend, she rang up, she said, uh, the manager of Hayat Regency, Delhi, his sister's son has gone blind with an unwritten disease that nobody knows about it. His name is Michael, and can you help? And the reason why she rang me up was that when my father passed away, my mother became blind with shock. And uh, I went deep in study of Ayurveda. Every doctor said, you know, we have no answer because we don't know why her eyes disappeared, so we cannot bring it back. And you know, I said, my God, you know, can't have mummy with no eyes, can't see, it's terrible. So uh, I went into the um, study of Ayurveda, and I found a herb with a combination of others. It said, the secret to eternal sight. Hmm. So I said, let me try no harm. They're giving us so many eye drops, this also. And started that. And uh, I flew away to Dubai for a press conference. She was on the drops for six months. And she was totally blinded. The girl used to take her around. And then the girl rang up one day and she said, in, in Dubai, she said, Ma'am, I took your mummy for a walk and she can see the color of the flowers. And in short, when mummy passed away, she read the newspapers, just those eye drops. So then Barbara Cartland heard that and said, Can you give this to Michael? He's young, he's in a computer company, he's suddenly gone blind. Now I don't know what happened really because my mother's drops are different to what he needed. And now today, Michael is back in the computer company, and you can see, you can read it in my press material. So I can't explain Ayurveda. Please understand, when the world had no chemicals, India always had herbs. In the back, yeah. You have put a lot of women into business in India. This is fabulous. The World Bank, in fact, has said women are the low-hanging fruit for India. Is that skill transferable to another business? Can you help someone else put a lot of women into business? I'm all the time doing that. It's very worrying, but you know you can do that much and no more as a single person. But I've tried very, very hard to put women, you know, from a level in society where they had trouble getting up. And then A is first to educate them. And they first convince the people around them that they require education. That's one job to get them out of their environment, and then educate them. 
and then just educating is no good than to put them in a situation where they are able to earn or do something with their lives, financially or otherwise, place them. That's happening all the time. At the moment, I've taken two or three areas which cause me concern, uh, which got a little away from your question. But one is um, the, the blind school I look after. I train them and then give them a career, and then, of course, get them set up. That's very important. And then the physically challenged, like the deaf and dumb, we get them jobs. And they're always in demand. And the third is uh, people below the four poverty line. We educate them. And then it's very important to set them up. Just give them education, no good. You have to set them up and see that they have a career of their own to look after. Because very often, you know, if the husband earns, the whole family is living off him, it's tough. But the husband earns, the wife earns, then they have uh, income which is double what it used to be. And then I feel that, and I keep saying this at women power meetings, we educate a woman and we educate a whole nation because the children, if the mothers educate, the children grow up in a better form. If the mothers educated, the children are better educated, they're financially better off because the mother was educated. So I think that it's very important that the women that are educated through me are set up. It's uh, very difficult for you to understand, but uh, to give a woman just education and then let her loose is no good. Then you have to set her up and see that she gets a job. I think what happens if, with most institutions is they educate and let go. I think that's where the job starts. You have solved that. Thank you. Can you can you help other industries set women up? Why not? Why not? I'd love to. Why not? If anybody comes to me and says, "Can you help?" and we've got this group of women, can you help them do something worthwhile? I would love to do it. You just have to know that I'm available for it. I'd love to do it. I'd love to do anything that I could. To make a difference in a woman's life, it would be worthwhile, in any form, whatever. Yeah. I was wondering if we could talk a little bit more about your research and development department. Um, do, do you always going to Ayurvedic text or, um, or formulations, or um, you're looking at a plan and then developing your own formulations? And also, if you have some something similar to like clinical. Uh, um, you know, product testing, how, how do you know the product that you're developing are actually effective? That's a very tough job what we're doing. Like uh, recently, we launched a product uh, called Teleme from uh, various plants, in Indian plants. If I tell you too much, you start your own company. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we started working on that in 1989 and we launched it last year, which is 2012. So that uh, requires some time to. Uh, work out. You know, we're never in a hurry. Even the eye coal we have, uh, we've tried over a period of maybe 10 to 12 years. We use uh, something called trifla, hard behera aula, and then people with like, you know, if the eyes are minus 2 or minus 2.5 or whatever, we test the eyes and start the eye coal. And then over a period of one year, two years, watch it becomes 1.5 and then 1, and then of course. So we see the trifla is working in combination with other herbs. So all the time, R&D is a very busy department. And uh, I head r and I don't do anything in India. I head R&D, that means research and development. I head innovation. And I head quality control. That's all I do, nothing more. And of course, apart from that, I look after media. I think I can talk best for what I'm doing. It's very big. It's, uh, the R&D in Thorge is about 25 acres. What we do is a lot of our plants, because I think there's so much pollution and so much of mess up in the quality of the plants, we grow a lot of our own plants. Because once you have your own plant quality control, then you can see the ultimate product coming out better than exactly buying from the market and offering to the public. R&D is very important, because unless you have R&D, you can. There are two or three things that are very required in business, tough. One is research and development all the time. You stop innovating, you stop growing. And the other is quality control. It's very, 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 very important. Because new ideas, innovations. I had innovations all the time, all the time. I'm all the time thinking of the tomorrow. I will never know. Any other question? 
Well, thank you so much for sharing your valuable experience, and thank you for engaging with our audience. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So